Thank you for coming for my actually first non-technical talk because as you can see on this laptop, I am not like doing this very often. Uh, so my name is Martin Stefanko, and for the pre uh, basically this talk, you only need to know that I am working for some quite time in Red Hat. Uh, you can find me online uh, everywhere as Xstefank. A uh, little bit about background: why I decided to do this talk. Basically, it, you can see myself down here, which is not very nice. But this is myself five years ago, because actually my first public speech was at DevCon 2011. Oh, 2019. So I really wanted to do something new, something uh, challenging to myself, because like all my talks are about technology. I am a software engineer. I can talk about code all the time. Typically, my talks don't even have slides. So I am trying something totally new, so bear with me. What I wanted to talk about today is uh, because I really like software engineering and technology in general, I really wanted to focus on how you can basically work on your own careers because my career was actually really fast. Actually, in next month, I will have only nine years in Red Hat and I started my first job at Red Hat as an intern and now I am a principal software engineer. So I, I think that I can talk a little bit about this self. So I want to talk about these like inner ghosts over your shoulder that will basically is represent your career. So we will focus on five main areas that I think that are important uh, in your careers. And basically we can sum this up as some foundation, some achievable goals, soft skills, burnouts, and basically some mentorship. So, cultivate a strong engineering foundation. I believe that most of you uh, visited or attended some form of university, IT university, that basically give you some like coding knowledge, or even if you start yourself, you will get uh, basically a good starting point how to approach coding. However, I strongly believe that this is not enough and you need to realize that you chose a profession uh, if you are doing software which requires continuous learning and by continuous learning i don't mean that you will uh, attend devconf once per year and you will learn about some new technology i mean you need to basically approach it uh, proactively and do some work on top of uh, your basically the everyday work uh, i heard or like i read some papers which uh, basically assumed or like recommended you that you do like around two to three hours on top of your normal eight hours of work in your spare time to just learn about new technologies if you want to stay current i'm not saying that you need to do this but we will get into a little bit details later here i just want to really quickly show you like at least a few big changes in our industries that came in a few like last 15 years like 2009 was blockchain like that was already a revolutionizing technology in 2011 came microservices which totally changed the way how we approach uh, applications in 2013 docker like do you remember what we did before docker because i do not uh also 2014 kubernetes actually kubernetes had 10 years like two weeks ago uh totally different way how we approach how we write applications and this is like only spent of five years uh, also in 2014 came serverless but this is like separate and now with uh, chat gpt we have uh, ai age this is just to show you like the industry changes so fast that if you are not willing to keep up with it you will basically really stagnate what i do usually because like that two or three hours is typically not something that any of us can actually allow us to do because typically you have family you have some other interests i recommend uh reading blogs every every time that you have some time and by some time i mean even bef uh, between uh, compiling of your project if you have like two or three minutes uh, you are waiting for something you already typically have several screens so you can read something on the other screen uh if you ask my colleagues how many screens i have at work then they can tell you uh there are many software blogs that you can choose like i just pick hacker news but there are a bunch of them just like find something that is interesting to you try to find a way how to separate uh, basically the content that is relevant to what you want to learn and basically take it from there also i 
really like to basically uh, consume video content when uh, I have a time. So typically most of the uh, conferences nowadays have at least some parts of the conferences recorded. Like here you can, for instance, probably also find my presentation from that 2011, uh, 2019. Uh, DevConf is of course a little bit smaller conference. It has like some specific use cases, but I'm coming from Java background. Even one of the like one basically biggest conferences in Java world also do this. So if I cannot travel to, for instance, UK or like DevOxes are the biggest uh, Java conferences, there is one in Belgium or Morocco, etc. I can still catch up on what was there even if I'm not there. This is extremely important, I think, because uh, basically in these conferences you will typically get the state of the art. You will basically learn what is current. What I also found out just lately is this daily dev, you can see it up here, which is basically a site where you can uh, select basically your interests and they will do this kind of work for you, which I find very valuable because then they can just basically give me a proposal of a bunch of videos and uh, blogs and I can just pick and choose what is interesting and just catch up with it. And of course, if uh, you really want to take this seriously, books. Like uh, when I was younger, now I'm not having that much time to read, but when I was younger, I was always trying to alternate between a book that is interesting and fun to me and book which was about code because that's typically not so much fun, but it's something which was required uh, for my like everyday work. And of course, uh, social media because I cannot uh, basically stress this enough. The best way how to consume what is the current like trends and current technologies are from people which are actually following that. And uh, I'm not saying that I am someone like that, but I'm trying. Uh, I have my basically group of people typically now on X, but they are like everywhere on any social media that you want that are doing this kind of work proactively, they are actually attending this kind of conferences. So if they share uh, a blog post or some information that they think is relevant, I know that is relevant to my work too. Okay, so uh, if you will have any questions, just jump into my speaking. This is not, not supposed to be a uh, monologue if it doesn't need to be. So the second thing, setting achievable goals. Uh, Basically, what I found out in my career is that I need to basically have some kind of achievements or checkpoints. Uh, when I started, I didn't really know where I was heading, but with my first promotion, I understood that I achieved something and I wanted to get more. And this is where I started basically setting goals for myself to basically aim for something. Uh, what these kind of goals can be varies. It depends what you want to get from your career. For somebody, it can be promotion. Like that's totally valid case, but typically it takes several years. For somebody, it can be just a release because people can like really celebrate sometimes that some piece of work is finished. But for me, actually, it was just like fixing a bug or like implementing a feature when your pull request get matched. Because like, I, I feel that this is my uh, basically acknowledgement that I did something correct. So it depends what you want to get, but you have some ex examples. What I also think is really important is to set something which is like a really distant and possibly also seemingly unachievable goal. <laughs> because uh, Actually, I think that this drives you to do more stuff during that journey towards that goal. Even if you will not ever reach it, just that the journey itself is important and it will open a lot of doors for you. So when I was still a junior, uh, in Java we have this Java Champions program, which is basically just a reco commun community recognition of your achievements around language. So if you speak, write, uh, etc., basically propagate the language. Uh, I don't know any Java champion by, by this time when I just learned about this program. I just said to myself, why not? Like, let's, let's try if uh, I can get there. Uh, I still don't know any Java champions here in uh, Brno. We have one now in uh, Prague. But basically, 
what I want to get into is basically, I'm still not the Java champion, but just because I wanted to be, or I still want to be, I started my public speaking, for instance, because I had extreme stage fright. When I was first speaking in that uh, Dev session, that was extremely bad. And this is me on that DevOps United Kingdom, which I was showing <laughs> videos from, from uh, two years ago, I think. So that's one of the biggest Java conferences. And I wouldn't start with it if I wouldn't uh, set that goal. I also write now my first book, which was also something which I did proactively because, yeah, I basically wrote to the publisher, I want to write a book. And they told me, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we are writing a book. <laughs> uh, I also last year started leading my uh, Java user group here in uh, Brno Czech Republic. So if you are around Java, definitely come. You, we have like 600 people, typically not like 600 people on every meetup, but it's something that is already pushing and like my community is growing. Like really, it's something that has an impact. So you see that I am not, uh, this is an image from one of our meetups. Again, I can, self-propagation. So you see that like, this is not something that you will basically come up with if you don't really aim for something, at least in my personal opinion, because like I really don't think that I would be doing this many stuff if I wouldn't be aiming for the Java champion. And if somebody asks if it really matters to me now that I will become a Java champion, not really, because I'm already proud about like all of these things that I'm already doing. Okay, communication and soft skills. Oh, how many of you would consider yourself as introverts? Wow, everybody. <laughs> okay. Well, this this will be interesting. So, yes, I can understand you. We are choosing this kind of uh, area of work because we are not really want to interact with people. And I can understand that because I also value my private time and I really like to put my headphones at work and don't know about everything else, just focus on my screen. However, if you want to achieve anything uh, in your career or, okay, maybe that's not correctly put. If you want to achieve anything in like normal times, because typically you can get there, but it will take a long time. I know that some people are getting promotions in uh, 10 years. Like if you want to be stuck at one position for 10 years, that's totally valid point. Nobody is pushing you to do this kind of stuff. But when you realize that just by like talking to somebody over a coffee or uh, just, you know, like even when I'm uh, at work in the kitchen and I hear somebody just talking about something that I know something about, I will just, you know, like basically politely jump into that conversation. And I will learn something, people will know me. And when there is time to get a promotion, then you basically just like give a list of like so many people that can basically tell you like, yeah, he had this great idea about like totally unrelated thing, which I have like typically no idea about. Just like from a different perspective, I typically can help them like give ba basically just that different perspective. And that basically is really helpful. Then you have other issue that you will start forgetting who you meet and yeah, that, that, that's different problems. But these coffee talks are usually something which you can start as a first step if you are an introvert, because typically this is people that you know, that you sit with at the office all the time. So just this kind of small talk, you will see how fast you will basically grow this network of people that you know, at least in the office. And then, of course, this will naturally extend when you are coming to the conferences or something similar. Yeah, this is, uh, again, after every uh, session that we have for the Java user group, we have uh, basically this kind of after party that we just basically sit in like room five by five meters and we just talk. And typically we talk there till the university on the other university will basically throw us away. What I also found out this really helps. <laughs> of course, this is just one part because knowing people or just talking to people will go get you only that far. If you really want to push or boost your careers, you need to basically s make this initial step at least to some form of uh, presenting or talks. And this doesn't necessarily need to be DevConf or bigger conferences. You can start small. 
Uh, actually, in uh, my team, we have uh, so-called tech talks every two weeks, uh, where basically somebody only over the internet, so it's not even in person, will just present some current problem that they are working on, some interesting in technology. So it's still something related to what they are doing. They are basically feeling more comfortable in the topic, and basically nobody is judging. This is that general point that basically we want to teach people how to present. There are also uh, these like Toastmaster meetups where basically there is a bunch of people just trying to focus on presentation skills. I actually tried that when I, before I started presenting. Uh, personally, I didn't find it that valuable because they will teach you how to create the content, basically. But this will not help you with the actual delivery if you are afraid of or have this stage fright. But when I was first presenting uh, in 2019, I was literally shaking. And I still don't think that I totally gave it up, but it's way better. I with practice, basically it came like that I can just show it away and I can now travel the world just because I speak at different events. Of course, for that you need to have a uh, little bit of help and I'm very glad that my employer is supporting these kind of activities. But uh, like, uh, I opened so many possibilities because I started speaking publicly that I cannot recommend it enough. Like, this is my room from uh, J Nation from uh, two weeks ago. And that was in Coimbra, Portugal. So, I, I really think that this makes sense. Then you have chances on uh, local meetups. Uh, of course, like these Java user groups or there are like AI groups here in Brno, these are typically very welcoming en environments. I actually really want to get people who are just starting to give it a shot because uh, you are not restricted by time, like I am here because you need to change sessions. Uh, you are not basically getting any kind of, you know, like five minutes left or etc. Et <laughs> uh, my first talks uh, on these like local meetups was actually also on Java user group, which was done before I took over. That was in a pub uh, with really, this is on recording, really bad monitor. Uh, present, uh, presentation uh, screen. Uh, I basically did around one hour talk about distributed transactions. And after that, when I finished, basically people just stand around me and I didn't move from that uh, table where I was presenting for another three hours. And that was a really amazing experience because you are not restricted by time. So people were just like going for a beer and coming back. And we just continued talking and we basically over a computer continue coding and we were getting actually basically very good conversation from that. This is why I really think that it's important to do this gradually, especially if you have issues with it, doing it in small steps, always chewing a little bit more will really help. And of course, then I started small comps, which I still consider the comp to be a smaller comp. And yeah, then I give it, gave it a shot and I submitted proposals to bigger conferences and I was like, well, my first bigger conference was uh, Geekon in Prague, which is inside cinema, on the cinema screen. And uh, yeah, I was also very nervous. There is a recording on YouTube if you really try to search. Uh, when I opened my laptop, I had like uh, half of the talk uh, slides and half was live coding. I open my laptop, I open IntelliJ IDEA, and my license expired. Five minutes before the talk. I am really sweating on that video, so don't search. <laughs> but these like, kind of things will basically help you get somewhere. Okay, so recognizing and mitigating burnout and overwork. This is something that I really like. Because I believe that all of us basically sooner or later will get into the position when somebody is pushing you too much or you yourself are pushing you yourself too much, which is more my case, where you will get into the point where you cannot just uh, continue. My worst cases were when uh, I was finishing university, I was already working full time for half a year. And uh, in that time, I was able to basically drink a half a liter of energy drink. I put it down and I fall asleep. So it's not something that I recommend that you will try. 
Uh, also, doing double digits of coffee is not a good idea from like health perspective. And don't lie to your doctors. They will find out. Uh, so, oh, what you can do or what I recommend you uh, people to do is always separate what is your work time and what is your free time. And by free time, I don't mean that you spend time with family or it can be time with family. But usually, uh, it's not something that you enjoy that much. There are like people, of course, that are enjoying this too much. But what I mean, fo separate some time just focusing on yourself. Do something that you want to do and do this continuously and possibly also as a form of basically reward for yourself if you achieve some of your goals. Uh, when I was uh, studying for uh, my final exams, for me, uh, I basically watched uh, how many there are, eight series of The Office. Like every time that I finish a block of what I wanted to learn, I watched 20 minutes of The Office. That was my reward that I basically, you know, like it's like dogs, like it, it's a treat. Uh, so one other thing that I also want to stress out that we, as we are coders, we tend to get into this flow state when you basically start like diving into the code this much that you forgot that the time is passing by. This is really bad because like, uh, at least to me, it happens for hours when, when I really get stuck into some debugging issue. Uh, it's really important to find some time to basically just step out, uh, out of computer, just get a fresh breath, do something else. Like even when you are like inside the office, just go for a coffee, go for a walk. Even like now uh, when I have time, uh, and I know that I need to be in a meeting when I don't uh, need to have my camera on, I will really just put it on the phone and I will just go walking around the office. Uh, what also really helps is when you have colleagues that don't basically mind if you talk to them. Typically when I'm stuck, and uh, usually I have uh, more junior people around myself, but when I'm stuck on an issue, they are very basically keen to just listen to me talking about this kind of issue. And we have a whiteboard, so I will just basically draw it to them. They will not typically help me, but just explaining the issue to them helps me. Oh, yeah, This is actually my last drawing from the office, which I, I took a uh, photo of. So basically, uh, what, what I mean is uh, this really helps like this kind of rubber ducks, but I don't really want to like make the similarities in this, but it helps to talk to somebody. You will take a pause. You will basically take a fre fresh perspective of what you are doing. And this is really important, I think. And there is also something which I think is really important is if you are like stuck somewhere for eight plus hours, and we will talk about it, uh, it's really important to have also this kind of like entertainment, I think, at your work. So in our office, we have a uh, football or table football, mm. which is very bad generated AI image, but like normally we, we have a normal football. And every day after lunch, we will play like three, four games. We are always like there, like four people ready that we will play this like really like half an hour of uh, table football. And it's something that I look for, uh, forward to. It's something that I know that I will get after lunch. So it's like, basically now it's a must. Even when we are not four, we are always trying to figure out some ways how to play at least a little bit. And it's, of course, it doesn't need to be like sport or something. You can, uh, again, watch episode of The Office, whatever. Just do something that will give you the energy for the rest of the day, for instance. Okay, I, I really wanted to at least uh, shortly touch on uh, how much time, because uh, if you don't have any restrictions uh, in your like home environments, at least for, uh, I know several people that tend to sti uh, stick to work more than eight hours or more than nine hours. And I think this is something that you should, thank you, really take into account. Uh, always, and uh, I literally did like put an uh, alarm clock on my table just to like know that this is the time but to leave the work. Because like if you don't have wife that is pushing you that it's like time to go home, that it's hard to basically focus. So it's like what I want to basically give you as a recommendation, basically be 
put pressure on yourself to stick to some kind of schedule. Make sure to rest. Okay, and last thing, uh, seeking mentor me mentorship. Uh, basically, very few of us are lucky enough to find one single senior person which can lead you all the way or in your career and tell you what you should do and what you shouldn't do. I know that some people are willing to do this, but you typically it's not the case. If you are lucky like that, good for you. Uh, typically, what I found out really works, at least from my position as a senior in my team, is uh, having shorter sessions or shorter mentoring like spans that I deal with with individual people in my team. So I will have a meeting with individual people in my team, even if I'm not a manager, I'm just like uh, engineer, and I will just help them with their current problem. Or I, if they have uh, questions what to do next, I will help them find new problems to work on. I will try to assign like some projects that I know that nobody is working on because I have a broader view of what we are doing. I'm trying to move them forward. And this is not something that is taking me like all my time. It's not something that is we are doing even like really continuously, but it's more on like uh, when needs to be basis. And I think that people, at least in my position, are really willing to do this because it also helps us to move forward. And then again, social networks, because unfortunately I think that uh, technology is moved on Twitter or X or whatever you want to call it. Uh, so find people around yourself which can basically teach you something and move you forward. So it doesn't need to be someone that you really know in person. You can also find them uh, online. And then it's really funny if you are asking like random people strange questions like how to move my career, but it happens to me all the time on LinkedIn, for instance. And last thing, I really think that if you are in a junior position, don't be afraid to ask your senior people for help and uh, also ask them continuously because I know that there is this fear that you are basically distracting the person because he or she is working too much and it's too focused and you are afraid to ask. But it's just basically more expensive for everybody if you are stuck on a problem for prolonged periods of time if I can solve your I issue in a few minutes. And basically, uh, I know that I had a tendency to look very angry when somebody distracted me when I was coding. <laughs> but it's not something that you don't want to help. Just when uh, I am really focused in some like deep thought and somebody will get me out of it, I really have a tendency to get angry. But that's not that I don't want to help. It's more that you need to find a way, and this is something that you can discuss with that person that you are asking, what is the correct way how to distract them. And for me, for instance, is I really told my juniors to put an event into my calendar. So I really see like this is like a 10 minutes when I want to talk to you and I can basically adjust my schedule to that. And I know that it's coming. Okay, so just to repeat everything that I talk about. Learn continuously. This is cannot be stressed enough. Set achievable goals, work on your soft skills, because unfortunately you have to if you want to achieve something, make sure to rest and find some inspiration in people. And with that, basically this is everything that I prepared for you. Here you can find a link to the slides and also a link to my book, but this is like more a technical book, but this is my like general finishing slide and I'm doing technical talks. And that's it, more or less. Any questions? Go ahead. So, sorry, I, I didn't answer. I tried it. So, sorry, I... Uh, like two or three? I did only one presentation there. I, I really tried wa just one presentation and that was enough for me because they... Sorry, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, the question was if I attended Toastmasters and uh, how many sessions did I did there. I did only one session there because like, I really just wanted to learn how to do basically the presentation itself. Uh, because I tend to learn how to present from the people that I look up uh, to. And this is enough for me to learn how to do this. I also like this kind of uh, talks and images is something that I, did I didn't come up with. Also that life coding isn't something that I came up with. I saw a guy, I was sitting in the audience and I saw somebody like life coding and I was 
really took into that. So I really wanted to try to replicate that. Any other question? <sighs> well, I'm still aiming for the Java champion, I guess. <laughs> oh, yeah, what is my inspiration? That I, I think this is still that Java champion. What will be after that? I really don't know. Like I, I personally don't think that I need to really think about it right now. For me, it's now enough already. What what I'm doing on this journey. Go ahead. Okay. 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 Uh, the question is like, or it's not a question. Like, if it's uh, not uh, a goal, not an inspiration. Okay. Uh, fair point. Uh, for me, I would say that people who are already Java champions are inspiration because they are doing exactly that stuff that I'm trying to replicate. So it's like all put together. Any other question? Go ahead. Okay, the question is why the social interactions are so important. Basically because, at least in Red Hat, when you are being basically promoted, for instance, the more recommendation from individual people you get, the easier the it is to get promoted. So if people know you, uh, it's better tendency for somebody who is making this decision to basically just tell, yes, this is people, uh, this is person that has like, you know, like touched so many areas in different parts of the company, it helps. If uh, you are uh, trying to, for instance, submit to conferences, if people see that you have thousands of followers on uh, Twitter, basically that just helps because they think that you are knowledgeable, they, you have an impact. If you are writing a book and your publisher is really bad at you that it's not selling so much as they would imagine, it really helps to have like a lot of talks, a lot of like social interactions. It's all intermined. Like, you can basically get to some point in your career if you are just sticking to your everyday task and you are just doing your job. But if you want to achieve something quicker or something more, you just need to deal with people. I'm sorry, we are like social creatures. <laughs> <laughs> Any other question? Go ahead. So basically, th this was a recommendation that you also do some kind of reflection for yourself and uh, basically you are continuously expanding your knowledge. And I definitely agree this is important. Basically, what I would just recommend is just basically don't be too harsh to yourself. Like basically, like that goals, if you don't achieve something and you fail, this is not a bad thing. You already learned something that you were getting there. And like, if you are just reflecting too much, then just basically find something which you will stop. For me, it's for instance, every day, if I have time, I, I will try at 6 a.m. to be in the gym. I will put the headphones and I like, my head is down. I cannot even count to, to 10. <laughs> Any other question? Then thank you for your attention. <laughs>